Yeah, we in this thing. We on that ground, man. We chilling. We chilling. But anyways, what's up, bro? It's your boy BA for real 100, and welcome to get your bars up. Media salute, salute, salute. Ugh. So we up in this thing, y'all, and uh, I just want to say shouts out to you know who for actually uh, getting your boy a gift. Get your bars up, wine glass. I appreciate you, but I just ah, I'm not a wine though. I'm not ah. I'm just kicking it with my people. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. But anyways, uh, man. Just got to watch an episode three and four of this uh, Chicago Bulls, The Last Dance. Now, I did a recap of the first two episodes and they were fire, but these three and four was even more fire. Yes, it was. Ah! What makes this documentary super dope to me? Well, honestly, I just feel like it's just raw. You feel me? You got you got like people that you looked at at a high level as uh, that you looked at as gods of the basketball fan world of those times in the 90s. Uh, you got you got their actually pure raw human side, and that that's dope. That's dope. It makes them seem human. You dig? We need that. We need that, especially if you fan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but with that being said, getting into the Dennis Rodman. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know who Dennis Rodman is, or don't and never ever seen him play, just know that he uh, was one of the best defenders that the NBA has ever seen, especially heads up. He was guarding. Uh, he was guarding your Michael Jordans. He was guarding your Scottie Pippins. He was guarding your Larry Birds. He was guarding your uh, um, uh, Magic Johnsons. He was guarding all of them. Cloud Drexler, etc. We can keep going. We can keep going with these Hall of Famers that he got. That he was guarding and that he was actually containing, uh, locking people down. That's what he used to do because he used to get into your head. But actually seeing how, seeing how he uh, he. He he uh he, he was having issues when Scottie Pippen came back from injury. That was crazy. That was crazy, but understandable because he was a star before he even got to the Bulls. Uh, but when it comes to Dennis Rodman, I'm telling y'all, I, I I think about it. Um, I think about if social media the way that it is in the 2020s. If if social if social media was Back then, when you had Twitter, etc., I, I, I kind of low key Dennis Rodman probably be the biggest star in the world. Real talk, he'd be the most, he'd be the most hashtagged and mentioned. Definitely, definitely, I give him his props. Why? Because he was doing, he was being himself and doing whatever he wanted to do uh, back in those times when stuff that he was doing was very unacceptable. It would be accepted now, definitely. It'd be accepted now, but uh, yeah, he's crazy, he's crazy. But um, yeah, if I was, well. Getting back to Dennis Rodman, because I'm all over the place, because you know we sipping. Yeah, get your bars up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, man, uh, he was the best defender, the best defender as, as well as the best rebounder that I ever seen. Uh, guy's second jump was on 110. They don't talk about that second jump in basketball, especially when you're a rebounder. And, ah! The second jump is pivotal, especially if you're at that power forward center position. If you don't have a second jump, you're not gonna make it. You got people right now that are super duper athletic that that, that don't have that second jump. It's based off of time and etc. This is something that Dennis Rodman had. Somebody that I can um, semi bring up, and he's not there. He's he's not there where he's supposed to be yet because he doesn't have the skill, but he has the athleticism. Zion Williams, that second bounce. Julius Randle on a smaller on a, on a on a different type scale had the same type of that second. That second jump is a monster. Ah, that's how he got so many rebounds. Who has 20 rebounds in a game and have zero points in the, in the NBA these days? Mm -mm, I don't see it. Let me hear y'all. Let me hear y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who? Dennis Rodman did because that's all he cared about doing, and that was the most crucial part. And that's why he was a big. Ah, he was a big piece. He definitely was a big piece. Uh, but something else. Uh, transitioning to Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson becoming coach. Uh, when Phil Collins was the coach in. Man, shout out to Tex Winners. Shout out to Tex Winners. Tex Winners was the, uh, the the quiet guy that was the you can say offensive coordinator of uh, uh, of the of the Bulls offense. He brought in what they call the triangle. What made the triangle offense super duper significant? Ah, what made it super significant? Ah, it was motion, y'all. It was motion. MJ used to go one on one and get his beat up. He used to get his beat up yeah 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 yeah. i'm trying to stop cursing i'm trying to calm down them as much as i curse yeah 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 i'm i'm conscious of it even when my get your bars up glass yeah we yeah yeah we still conscious but anyways uh um, yeah he uh he made the he made the offense amazing and getting to doug collins when doug collins was actually one of the people that were 
uh, was was the actual head coach at the time, Doug. And I remember being super duper young watching this. He used to just be like MJ Go, and MJ would bring him to the promised land. But there was always one problem to that uh, when they matched up against teams like the Pistons specifically. Um, they keyed on Jordan just like that. They keyed on him. And what they do, come one on one. We were expecting you to get here, but we're going to kick your butt. We're going to elbow you. We're going to knock you out the air. We're going to do all of that. So that triangle offense got the ball out of his hands and made the Detroit Pistons because they came back and swept them, boys. And they didn't want to shake their hands. I'm just, ah, I see, I see you. Ah, ah. Mmm. But, Yeah. Uh, shout out to Tex Winners and Phil for that. Um, Doug Collins, man, he, he made a point. Jordan won, and when he was head coach and he gave Jordans the reign to do pretty much anything he wanted to do, he was Defensive Player of the Year. He was MVP. He was first team this. He was all-star MVP of all of that. But mm, couldn't get over that hump. Couldn't get over that hump. Had to get the triangle. The first year, the triangle didn't work. Didn't work, but that second year, uh, shit, the Bulls... They didn't, they didn't look back. They didn't look back. But, um, yeah, man, um, Doug Collins, man. I, I, would the Bulls still have won a championship uh, with Doug Collins as the head coach? That is up for grabs. Um, me, with the type of offense that they had, the one, the spread, and all of that stuff, uh, I, I, I think they might have got one. But six and eight years? I don't know about that. We're going to sit to that. But, yeah, um, man, uh, getting back to Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, I didn't know that he had won a championship in the CBA, and that's one of the, the, the reasons why he became who he became. I mean, why he was chosen to be the Bulls head coach. I didn't. I had no idea. I had no idea. It sucks that, um, like I said, they had to get rid of Doug Collins, which he had the team, and the team was actually ascending right before our eyes. But, yeah, couldn't. Ah! Doug, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doug. Doug never got to coach another team to win a championship, but he did coach a few teams after that. I believe he got he coached the Sixers and who else was it? The Sixers and uh, the Wizards when Jordan came back. That's probably why it's one of the reasons why Jordan came back too. By the way, to that particular uh, team. But um, man, uh, that's that's all I really got about this episode three and four. I believe it was a very, very solid episode. I like how they highlighted uh, MJ's first championship, how much it meant to him because people talk all of this stuff about LeBron James and comparing him to Michael Jordan. And they always did uh, one of the things that LeBron James wins when it comes to his his uh, particular stands. I didn't say fans, stands. Because they say Jordan wasn't scrutinized like uh like like LeBron. LeBron's in this social media age. He can't do anything. This that this that people say that he couldn't win all of this. And he had more pressure where as y'all seen in the documentary, he was putting pressure on MJ. They said that he didn't pass the ball. They said he was selfish. They say he didn't make his team better. And I can only imagine how he would be in social media <laughs> if social media was back in those days. But I say that to say this. Uh, Jordan had a lot of pressure on him too. That's one of the things that made him one of the greatest, or uh, to me, the greatest to ever uh, to ever play the game. Um, I got him one A and Kobe one B. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, the bean, the bean. Yeah, r- 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 rest in peace, sir. Rest in peace. But uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. Interesting, interesting series. I'm enjoying it so far. I, I'm hoping that um, five and six are are even better. You dig? Because that's my generation of basketball. I love that particular generation because it was full of stars. And then you had the one elite team at the top that was like, nah, you can't get it with the biggest icon in uh, in sports history possibly, but the biggest icon ever in the game of basketball. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Jeffrey. Mr. Jeffrey Jordan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anyways, um, I'm about to get up out of here and uh, shoot. I gotta shoot all of these other videos, but you know I had to talk my stuff about these uh, these 90, uh, 97, 98 Bulls, which was one of the greatest teams of all time, and that was a second three peak. So you know we had to talk our ish. But anyways, this your boy BA for real 100. This is Get Your Bars Up Media. If this is your first time here, click that subscribe button. You rock with me, I rock with you. And if you out there hating just because you think I'm a new guy and you just now stumbled upon my page and I've been doing this for a minute. And all I can truly say is thank you for coming. And get your bars up. Salute, subscribe, all that good stuff. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this documentary. And uh, tell me if y'all are excited about this documentary. Is it is it off the chain or is it whack? To me, I'm digging it. Not just because it's quarantine. I'm, I'm digging it in general. But anyways, I'll let you boy. 
Salute. Y'all be safe out there.